Confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. First impressions last. You start behind the eight ball. You never get in front. You can do whatever you want. You, you're in control. There's also something about attempting to put some effort into presenting your, putting your best foot forward. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So this is our uh, next edition of Confidence Breeds Success. Now, last time we talked about getting your first suit. And we had some nice rave reviews from everybody. And I appreciate everybody here uh, within uh, the crew participating. But now we got something new. Along with the suit, you got your suit ready, you're good and everything like that, you're straight, you're ready for your job interview. What's the next thing that you should really look into? Cologne. Cologne makes everything for every type of situation. Job interview, clubbing, just sitting around the house, whatever. So I'm going to give you a quick breakdown here. I know we're on a little short end on time here, but there's about three things that you need to look for when you're shopping for colognes first of all is price you have to be careful in what you're buying because a lot of these colognes that you see they're pretty expensive you go from the creed aventus to the, the ck ones to dracar to uh uh versace arrows you're going to have a range of prices between let's say 50 to 150 to 250 dollars for a bottle these are like investments that you're doing for yourself. So you really have to do a lot of shopping and, and, and checking to see what you can afford. Because we said, just like the suit, you have to have a budget. And at the same time, you wanna treat yourself. You wanna make sure that everything fits like a glove from the suit to the pants, to the shoes, to the cologne. It all ties in together. You also have to make sure that the cologne is versatile. Can you use it anytime? Can you use it anywhere? Can you use it all the time or is it only some of the time? Because all these colognes vary in their intensities. And of course, we all are looking into people's opinions. When you spray that cologne on, people are gonna walk by you and be like, hey, what's that smell? Oh yeah, actually you smell good. Hey, what's that you're wearing? Or it could be a female doing the same thing. You're trying to look for, you know, it's not you're looking for compliments, but you wanna look for colognes that fit your body chemistry that is one of the most important things so what do you do when you finally get that cologne how do you apply it three to six you can do around maybe about six inches from your body you can spray to your neck you can spray on your shoulders you always try to go for the hot spots in the body we have our neck we have our shoulders our arms our wrists sometimes uh even the lower jaw it's all about what produces the heat because the chemical reaction from the colognes is going to produce the the notes that come out remember i don't know if you know this gentlemen but there are three types of uh, perfumes three types of levels you've got your toilets you've got your colognes and you've got your perfumes what are the differences it, it, it's pretty significant it's all about the concentration the toilet is usually 5 to 15% in concentration. The cologne is about 2 to 4% in concentration. And the perfume is usually 20 to 30% in concentration. And that kind of adds on to the price of what you're paying at the store. So that's why you have to take a lot of this into consideration. Our bodies are different. You don't want to test your colognes out on a little card you know how you go to the department stores you spray it on a card and sniff it oh it's pretty good and everything it smells nice you don't really get those notes and those uh secondary and tertiary type of notes by spraying it on a piece of paper you only get it by the chemical reaction that happens to your skin so there's three types of fragrances from your top notes your heart notes which is the mid notes and then your base notes now gps when you put on popping colognes when do you usually put your colognes on generally i like to spray them on my t-shirts and uh undergarments uh mm. around my socks okay. so i don't really try to put them on my skin okay uh unless i know it mixes well with me okay um that's been my preference okay now uh, I prefer citrus stuff because a lot of the citrus stuff works for me. 
So okay. that kind of stuff will hit my skin, but the rest of it, if it's extra flowery, mm-hmm. uh, that kind of stuff, I prefer to put in the fabric okay. because okay. not only will I have an allergic reaction to some of this stuff, but uh, it just goes better for me the other thing. So that's what I do. Okay, okay. Now, now for me, I, I usually do it after the showers. A lot of people tell you to do it after when you take a shower and everything. Cortez, what about yourself? When you uh, right. pop on your clones, when do you usually pop on your clone? After them shower, you know, after them showered and everything, dressed and ready to go. Mm-hmm. I put a little bit of, I put, put some on my neck. Mm-hmm. I put some on my on my forearms also, man. Okay. I do put some on my forearms and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends. I, I tell a lot of people. When you're looking for, you looking for as as GPS is saying, the citrus, man, is because each certain colognes are used for dirt, certain times of the year, man. Yeah, I had no great. idea about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna get into that's, that. Oh, that's, that's something you gotta think about too, man. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes, you know, I wouldn't go out here and buy thirty or forty bottles of different colognes because you may you may not be able to use them all. <laughs> I don't think you want to use them all. But you're going to have your go-to one, one that you go to that's always going to be your winner, you know, 